That's the temperature this morning. 36 degrees, feels like 33. Look at the yards. They're white. <laughs> Game over, lawn guys. If you're in Savannah, good luck. I hope you had a backup plan. Ice. When you start getting this, it's over. We usually don't get that though until like, I think closer to January. There it is, only the first week of December. We got ice everywhere. It's on the grass. When that happens, it's over. Everything just uh, shrinks. You get shrinkage in the cold. Like when a man goes swimming afterwards. <laughs> it shrinks? We are gonna uh, go for a run this morning. It's gonna be a cold run. We're gonna go for a long run and we're gonna wear the Garmin, whatever this is saying. Position acquired, okay. Probably because I was in the house for so long. It is freezing. My hands are so cold. Two point seven six miles. Twenty six minutes. It's starting to warm up. Still says thirty six, only now it feels like thirty one. So it's actually feeling colder. But finally my hands are coming back. Oh, that was cold for a while there. But anyways, we're uh, about halfway to Walmart. Let's go to Walmart. Nice truck. Nineteen eighty-eight, twenty-five hundred bucks. Here's the number if anybody's interested. Good AC, runs good, AC heat, plate ready. Don't miss out. Wow, that's nice. Toy. Four point three five miles. Not bad. Okay, so what am I looking for at Walmart? I want one of the armbands to hold my cell phone. So I don't have to hold my cell phone when I run. I think uh, that'll help make things a little bit easier on me. Then all I have to worry about is my camera. All right? All right. All right? Let's see if they got one. Let's get ourselves a little mid-snack drink here. How you doing? Good morning. Something to keep the uh, energy up. Raspberry blood orange. Tart. Oh, no thank you. Mango. I like mango. Boosted. Probiotic machine. No sugar added. Sugars. 53 grams, 66 grams of carbs. That'll get me home. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a run. Oh. Don't worry, I'll pay for it. Oh, that's good. Tropical mango. Damn, that's good. Wow, I'm gonna slam it. I should get that for my ex-wife. $399. And it still has audio issues. Oh, it's a great camera, but it still has audio issues according to the reviews. Like when you try to put it in gimbals and stuff like that. It's really muffled, so... Eh, the, uh, the 4 does better. That's, that's the hard to chew right there. All right, so they have them for iPhone 6, 6S, um, iPhone 7, 7, 5-inch smartphone, 5.5-inch smartphone. So, 5.5-inch smartphone. Probably end up having to open it and see. 
I'm sure they'll let me. See if my phone will fit. I know I need to get with the times, man, and I need to get an iPhone, but it's just... I'm so uh, hesitant to do it because I don't like the whole not having a SIM card and transferring the files. I don't know. Alright, let's see if this thing will fit. Alright, before I leave, I gotta show you guys something that my boy wants so bad. Either his birthday or Christmas. His birthday's the 21st. Right here, this Flickr B3. You uh, you stand on it and you just kind of wiggle back and forth and it gets you moving and then you do like power slides and stuff. The back wheels swivel and the front wheel turns like a regular bicycle. Flickr B3. There's probably videos on YouTube of that. You guys should check it out. It's pretty neat actually. And they're all sold out but this is going to be something I'm looking into next. I used to run carrying dumbbells little like one pounders these are two pounds for two bucks but they're all sold out this is what I used to do I used to run, I used to run like this and I would just run especially on a treadmill this hole's too small you got to use the Olympic size so that way your thumb can fit totally in it and you grip it it's awesome very very difficult though changes the game for sure Tell me this doesn't bring back awesome memories. Remember when your big wheel would have the big flat right here to blow out? <laughs> you know what it doesn't have anymore? It doesn't have the lever to, to pull up on. Remember we used to have that lever to pull up on right here? Actually, I think it was on the right side. And you could do power slides. Huh. What's up with that? Strap in and go. That's interesting. All right, we got to get out of here. Let's go. Just under eight miles, and we are in the home stretch. Stopped only for the camera. Sorry. We did uh, 9.25 miles, one hour, 30 minutes, and it says I average 6.1 miles per hour. We gotta get into two projects today. One, my blower seized up on me while blowing the other day. Um, I might have ran it dry out of gas and burned it up. It might have been my fault. And because I see no gas in there right now, so I probably burnt it up. If you ever run two cycle and you run it out of gas, that means you're running it out of oil. And I might have just, I might have just bought myself a $250 blower. Um, and my door broke. My passenger door, I can't open it from the inside or outside, so I got to open it up and see what's going on. All right, let me show you this blower. What happened here? Um, I did run it out completely. I ran it completely out of gas. Rocky, stop. I got Rocky sitting there. We're ready to go bye bye here soon. He's hanging out. Um, I ran it completely out of gas, okay? And when you run two cycle engines completely out of gas, you run them out of oil. So for any of you new guys coming up that didn't know that, um, yeah. And if you're using your blower a lot, and I was, I was using this blower and I was using my other blower at the two blowers at the same time. Um, and I was blowing off. I did my backyard. I did her yard. I mean, we, I had a mess between these two yards um, Thursday. Uh, so it seized up and the pull cord wouldn't move. Um, nothing. 
And so I did run it out of, out of mix, for sure. So what happens is everything gets really, really hot and everything swells. The cylinder swells, the piston swells, everything swells, metal to metal, friction, and zoom. It just pretty much, it, it doesn't weld together, but it swells and just locks up. So what I did is I took the spark plug out here, okay? I took some 30 weight motor oil, a cap full of 30 weight motor oil, a cap from the quart container, and poured it in here, two caps. I let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then I took this, I uh, opened this cover up here, and I took the flywheel nut, and I went, because it's opposite thread, so you tighten it by, by going lefty-loosey. And I leaned on this until it broke. When it broke, it freed the cylinder, it freed the piston. Everything's working. And if I do this and show you in here, maybe you can see, hear it? It's working. So, I think we're lucky. I think we got lucky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this machine over and drain the oil out of the cylinder because it's gonna run like poop. I'm gonna let that drain for a little bit because um, we're gonna like instantly foul the spark plug out. I'm gonna put some mix in here and we're gonna fire this baby up in a little while. I gotta take that off and get to the guts because I can't open the door from the inside or the out. Crazy. So I gotta get to the guts of that and I'll show you that. If I can get that door to start working, that'll be fantastic. So there's no deal on the door. This shit's all screwed up in there, man. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna have to get it fixed professionally because I don't know. And I don't like not having that door accessible. The only way I can open it is if I grab this arm here and really go hard with it. It's broke here at this, and shit just got all screwed up, so, I don't know. I don't know what happened, so we'll have to see. Maybe somebody tried breaking into my truck and screwed it up. We'll definitely have to see what's up with that. Um, let me go wash up, and we gotta go get some food. Take Rocky downtown. In case you guys are wondering, Rocky is really good about riding in the car. Um, he mostly just sits up. I'm surprised he just sat, he laid down like that. He mostly just sits up and looks out the window and anybody that gets kind of close to the vehicle, he snarls and barks at. Uh, and what I do is I got him in a harness and then I leash the harness and I bring the leash up and I wrap it a few times around the head uh, thing there, the headrest. So, you know, just in case something were to happen, He's not going to go flying out the window. At least we'll keep his body in the truck. I mean, you know, what is, I know they make like harnesses and stuff like that. And I never really was a big dog in the vehicle person. But, you know, because when I was married, if I ever went anywhere, it was either for work or it was with my family. Um, but now that I'm single, I don't mind getting hair in my truck. I, you know, I got the other car that I can drive. So I'm not worried about people being, you know, sitting in dog hair. Although I did just vacuum it out yesterday, but still, you know what I mean. I got the other car for nights out, going out with friends, chicks, whatever. Um, so, now, I mean, I really just don't care. So, but what I'm going to end up probably doing is I'm going to look into a, um, a proper safety restraint that uses the seatbelt and uh, have him properly attached for safety sakes. He probably should be in the back seat, too, because of the airbag, but... I know. I know. Please don't yell at me. I know, I know, I know. But hey, I do a hell of a lot more than most people around here do. At least I got them leashed. Most people will either have their dogs on their lap or they'll have their big dog in the bed of the truck about ready to fall out. As soon as you jack the brake, the dog goes flying into the back cab window. So, screw that. I'm not into that crap. Here's the Tomic Bridge. These are the SCAD, the SCAD Savannah College Arts Design. Those are their barracks or dorms, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then here's the bridge. What do you think, Rocky? 
You like it? <laughs> he won't stop looking. You gotta be kidding me. This is the coolest thing ever, Dad. <laughs> Rocky, you like that? Cool? Sweet. All right, we'll go meet some people. We'll see how our day's gonna go. I'm trying to get him to be a little bit more comfortable around people and me. Right now, he's extremely, extremely protective of me. And, I mean, that's cool and all in our house, in our domain. But when we're out in public, I want him to be, you know, friendly until he senses my stress. And then, I, you know, then he'll, like a dog and his master, he'll react accordingly. But just being out in public, I want him to be nice. <laughs> Not so mean to people. But we'll see how it goes. Normally, he's okay. Uh, we'll see how it goes in a setting that he's not familiar with. Here's the ferry boat. And then here's this. And there's Rocky. Come on. This is why I need to build a cart for him. Rocky on his very first boat ride. We were doing so good until I set up a little base camp here, gave him some water and a Tupperware bowl. And then he decided it was it was his spot. And he wanted to get mean with everybody. No more barking. So a little little boy started to come running up and he uh, kind of got a little vicious in his bark and growl. Scared the kid. I guess as long as we don't set up a home camp, you know, like a little base camp or something, he doesn't feel like he needs to protect me. Huh? Say hello. Well, that was a heck of an adventure. Um, Rocky would not get on the uh, aluminum ramp that goes down to the boat. Oh, goodness gracious, that was horrible. Hey, stop it. So, yeah, that was a real nut roll, but we got him on, we got him across, we walked River Street, and we walked back. Let's go eat.